spring. I am definitely feeling uh, the spring fever and it's not even February. Here in Wisconsin, it just started getting cold again. We had a cold spell, it warmed up, and I think that's the teaser that got me feeling spring. And now we are getting frigid temps. So in today's video, we are going to transform a window with some decoupage paper, and we are going to make it look all springy. For this project, I grabbed an old window that I had in my stash, I went into my supply of decoupage papers, and I pulled out Cherry Blossom. This is a Roycycle decoupage paper. I'm also using Liquid Patina, and this is by far my favorite medium to apply the Roycycled paper. Now cherry blossoms remind me of spring and that's what I wanted this window to, you know, really portray. I love this paper because it has little bees on here. I love the writing, the greens, the pinks, all of that to me is screaming spring. Roycycle decoupage paper is an 18 pound tissue paper and the liquid patina is the perfect medium to apply that. So let's get started. First, you want to make sure that whatever you are applying the uh, liquid patina and your decoupage paper to is completely clean. I just took Windex, uh, which is a glass cleaner. You can use any type of glass cleaner that you have on hand and just very thoroughly wipe down your window. Now, this window was in the garage and I actually, if you watched one of my old thrift hauls, I did get this window on my free thrift haul where I had a viewer contact me and ask me to come pick their garage and I could take anything I wanted for free and I did grab this window when I was there. So I thought it was a perfect opportunity to flip it and get it out of my stash and like I said I would just recommend cleaning both sides of the window very thoroughly and I typically washed each of those panes on each side three times just to make sure it was really nice and clean. Now here is the back side and I am cleaning that. This is when I determined rather than me applying the decoupage paper to the front that I'm going to apply it to the back. So I am going to cut out each piece and uh, decoupage on the back side of that and it will really be nice crisp and clean images on the front. The window is completely prepped and clean and by far that takes the longest. I am taking my decoupage paper image facing down and we are starting on the very far right corner of the window and we're starting in that pane. What I did is I took my thumb and I traced along the edges of the pane. Uh, it's really nice that this decoupage paper just allows you to do that and you can see the lines that I've created. I then took a scissors and cut that image out. I lay that piece right back in that pane. I just want to make sure that I'm not going to get any of the images mixed up. And then I continue working left and I go right into the next pane, lay it down. I again, I square everything up, take my thumb and again, just trace that all the way around and then cut out. And again, I just work that through that whole first top row and then we start on the second row. The key here is just to make sure when you are tracing it that you are basically all the way very to the very edge. You want all your glass to be completely covered. So again, I just, when I'm tracing it, I make sure that when I lay that paper down, I get it right nice and tight up into the very corner. Uh, and I take my finger and I just mark it right along that edge. And again, I just cut it out 
If there's a little bit of an overhang um, in each of the panes, that is okay. You just don't want any of the glass showing through. Now, a couple of them, there were just tiny little bits of um, where you could see through yet the, on the backside with the glass. And when I did my final step where I painted the backsides, that really did alleviate that. Now I'm starting my second row and I'm just again working the same exact way from right to left and then this is when I discovered that my calculations were incorrect. I thought I was going to have enough paper to cover all three rows and when I lined it up I was just a little short for the third row so what I decided to do was run back inside grab another sheet of the cherry blossom and then for the third row I started from the very bottom and then worked my way up uh, that way there was a slight overlap in the image but actually you couldn't tell now that I have all the paper cut out, I am starting in that far upper right hand corner. I'm using liquid patina from DIY and I'm applying a nice even strip of uh, the liquid patina. I start and I work in sections that really helps prevent any wrinkles in my paper. So I do a starter strip, I even out all the liquid patina, apply my decoupage paper Paper, smooth it out and then apply a little bit more liquid patina again smooth the next little chunk out and work my way down and that really helps prevent all the wrinkles in your paper now you can find all your DIY paint supplies the recycled papers and any IOD products on my website at www.sonnetsgardenblooms.com so I continued to work left. I ended up getting the first top row all done. Then I just moved to the second row and did the exact same thing. Then your decoupage paper has to dry. And this took a little bit longer um, for it to dry here in Wisconsin today because it was awfully chilly. Even though my studio is heated, uh, it just seemed like things were not drying as quick as possible. Uh, but I, you know, patience, uh, you definitely have to have patience. So once it was all dry, then I moved on to the next step. Now, anytime you're using decoupage paper, it is always recommended that you start with a white background or a, like a, a brighter background it just really makes your images pop so initially I wasn't going to add a white background uh, but then after I held up the window to the bright light I realized that I really wanted to have that image really pop and in order to do that I had to paint the back side white so let's um, let this dry and then I'm going to show you the next step here is the back side and this is where it is completely dry. Now I wanna show you the front side and what I was talking about. So I held it up to the light and you can see that it's bright, but there it's definitely, there's some transparency and I wanted to make it really pop. So what I decided to do was I was going to match up the paint color with um, a DIY paint and I determined the paint color crinoline matched up that backside perfectly and I am going to paint the all the backside crinoline and initially I started off with one coat and I applied one even coat to the entire piece I let that dry and then I held it back up to the light and there was some different you could kind of see some brush strokes through it so what I ended up doing was applying two even coats of crinoline to the entire backside let that dry very thoroughly and then we seal it 
just also want to mention that I only am painting the backside of the decoupage paper, not any of the other trim. I really love that chippy goodness look and I liked how the crinoline matched that chippiness as well. I, when I do seal the DIY paint, I am also going to seal the whole backside. That way, all that chippy goodness is sealed in as well, and you're not going to get any of that chipping off. Now that it's completely dry, I am using Big Top to seal the entire piece. Anytime you use DIY paint, you do want to seal it with some type of top coat such as Big Top, a wax, a poly of some sort, and uh, I just find I love Big Top from DIY, and I am going to apply just one even coat to the entire piece. I start in the middle, and then I just work my way to each edge, and then I also cover all the way around the entire frame of the uh, window, I seal all of it. The only part I did not seal was the front. Uh, that looked like it almost had like a fresh coat of paint. Well, when I say fresh coat, you know, it's probably old, but it was more of like, um, like a, a, a fresher coat of paint that did not need to be sealed, like the backside with the chippiness. What did you guys all think? So this is not the first time that I have a decoupaged on a window. If you do follow me over on my lives, I had like a 20 pane window that it went over several weeks. We decoupaged all those window panes. I did it a little differently though. I painted the each of the window panes white and then I decoupaged on top of that. This was a little different. I decoupaged from the back side versus the front side, and I love the outcome. I think it turned out awesome. Um, it looks really clean and crisp from the front, and then I finished it off on the back. So I can't wait to hear what you guys think about it. If you're gonna try this at home yourself, I would definitely recommend it. Definitely takes a window to the next level. So uh, Friday's video, we are going to be doing the very last thrift flip for my stash. Uh, so join me on Wednesday night for my live and we'll go through the boxes and, or the boxes, the box. I think it's like a box and a half is what I have left. And then I'm going to take those items and flip them um, for Friday's video. So you guys have yourself a wonderful week and I really hope spring gets here fast. All right, well, take care and we'll see you Friday. Bye. Bye.